What's up, guys? Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes. This is what I really wanted to test out and see with you guys if this is something fun. So, normally we run this very stereotypical boss killing team and we see how it can do, but it gets a little boring sometimes because you only have like one actual damage dealer, it feels a little rough, but what if we used multiple heroes and we tried to make it to the point where we can have three of them dealing damage and doing some crazy stuff. Well, ooh, I almost messed up. I actually messed up, hold on. We got uh, <laughs> Auspicious Lucky Cat number six in the lineup. We do have to change a couple of these too. We need to change you over to this because we're doing broken spaces right now. Actually, you know what? We could try a different game mode too. Let's just let's just get everybody all set. I actually don't know if my flame shrine's open, but what I want to see is what six of these do. And now, why is that? Well, they're very tanky artifacts, which is true. But when releasing a basic active skill, it triggers fortune five times and prosperity five times on yourself. Fortune grants one random ally. A random ingot while prosperity gives yourself one these ingots can do two different things uh you can get 30 ingots of all damage dealt which could be interesting uh that's gonna stack up very quickly uh or you could get like you know 30 stacks of the silver ingots which gives you tons of all damage or not all damage reduction but uh emb style attack reduction based on the owner's attack so actually let me see is this even open it's not i didn't think it was so let's see what this team could do in broken spaces. Now, of course, these first battles are going to be absolute slaughters. Even though we're not chaining active skills together, our team is just way too strong. So we're just going to skip past a bunch of these here because, well, we're going to crush their little souls. But it's going to be interesting to see how three damage dealers potentially work. In some of the later fights now honestly our team is to the point where i think we are just strong enough for lord if you're asking to do a basic attack and kill off almost all these bosses absolutely <laughs> that is almost certainly the case in just about every one of these old modes honestly probably up to 10 and 11. yeah he's just killing them with a basic attack which is pretty much what we expected to happen uh, the crazy thing that's happening now is my Lord of Fearsman isn't even like a third as powerful, or I mean, he's a little over a third as powerful as some of the bigger whales in the game right now, which is why there's such a power creep between whales and even megalodons right now. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so yeah, I figured all those would be easy. Even eight and nine might be easy. And the good thing about this, even though we're going up against the carry, oh my gosh, the damage is like, remember when this was hard? It like, it feels like it's only been like a year or so since this part of Broken Space came out. I'm sure it's been longer, but this was actually quite difficult for most people's accounts. Actually, I think that was before Destiny Transition even came out. Um, But yeah, this is... This is interesting considering Lord of Fear Aspen's basic is doing some crazy amounts of damage here. And honestly, I think Lord of Fear Aspen just wins this in round two. Um, is it getting to the point with our Destiny Transition power that even these newer stages aren't going to be any impactful? And you gotta remember, we're not even running like crazy melodic strings here, which give us like 50% all damage dealt in the first round. Now, these health bars aren't moving, so we'll have to see how tanky our heroes are at this point because these waves do start to rack up a ton of damage to the point where maybe Heart Watcher can't survive. But if she does get enough of those stacks built up of those silver ingots, you might be able to stay alive in this battle. We'll have to see how this turns out. I don't expect most people to take much damage, and yeah, it looks like two rounds of stacking those ingots does make quite a difference for a hero that's not even having void in printing because well she can't because she's that old of a hero yet she is still relevant to this day i wish we'd get more support heroes nowadays like that are going to turn into transcendence heroes but uh yeah we are essentially untouchable at this point we have like these little itty bitty shields but they're enough to keep us going question is can we do this in one ticket with multiple damage dealers on our team 
Still probably would have been better running something like a Drake in here instead of a Doom Terminator Vulcan, to be fair, and kind of doubling up on the Aspen and the Lord of Sparkles single target. Oh, but Lord of Sparkles active just chunked that Gloria. I think there's a chance this works, even without getting active skills every single round. What if your Aspen just deleted the Gloria? Oh my goodness. I honestly, I think taking the Doom Terminator Vulcan out of this is probably the better the better result here because i think uh the vulcan's doing nothing in comparison to the these two single target damage dealers it feels so weird not to get actives in every single round but this is just insanity because uh the one thing we did have struggles with is keeping our team alive that are like heart watchers and stuff but it seems to be working kind of good now now aspen's gonna get a couple actives off and steal attack from them that's the only downside of the strategy is aspen not getting active every round means he's not stealing tons of attack every round but doom Terminator vulcan has his weakness disclosure yeah he's not doing much damage to be honest we got probably two more actives at the most coming from our lord of fear aspen and our lord of sparkles but this is intriguing this is actually intriguing. Yeah, I think running the Drake would 100% be a better strategy here. So we're going to get round 13 active, which means we're not going to get another active in round 15. So round 13 active kind of needs to be the end-all be-all for the Aspen and the Yorm Tum. See how it turns out. Big chunk damage. Oh, that's not a ton. We're not going to quite one ticket this, it looks like. Oh, wait a minute. What just happened there? Where did her health bar go? Was that Vulcan? I don't think that was Vulcan though, was it? That was weird. Oh my gosh, was that weird. I mean, he did a sizable amount, but I think having a Drake in this lineup would be better. Again, we do need to hopefully keep the Drake alive though. So we'll get rid of you and we'll run a two damage dealer setup. Man, one of these days, I think I might heavily invest into a Drake for survivability. <laughs> like, I really, really might. We're going to do the same thing here. Uh, honestly, we're just going to make him as tanky as possible. That's the best we got, kind of. And honestly, I think we're going to go ahead and put Unbending Will on you 2 just to play it a little safe. We got everything we want, I think... Let's see how this turns out. I, I've never actually had the luck to one-shot all of these waves in one ticket. How crazy would it be to do it with cats, of all things? That would be something amazing to see. I just don't know if we're going to take too much damage here in the first round from a force he's active. We might. These ingots might not be strong enough to keep heroes alive. Well, I mean, Heart Watchers hurt. And we're going to get, again, more stacks built up here. It might, oh, nope, 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 nope. The buffs turn to damage, so the Heart Watcher is going to go down, sadly. I wonder, I really don't know if there's any other thing to do except run maybe a carry or an Elena instead of the Drake. But, I mean, this still might work decently. I, I, I just, I don't know if we're going to be able to do crazy amounts of damage and one-shot this, per se. Ah, they're kind of going for different targets too, which is so weird here. But they are strong enough at this point, it seems like, with all those ingots to survive. Although the Drake's getting a little weak here as well. Maybe going for like a full powerhouse team would actually be a better option. Uh, then again, the Drake is staying alive, but again... We're going after the wrong target here. So that's not going to be a victory on one tap, sadly. Really good damage from both of them, and that's without having the Heart Watcher survive. Uh, oh, I, yeah, that's right. I always hate how you have to go into the actual preset to change their actual positioning. Uh, so you need to be more like over here, and we just need to hope the Heart Watcher can survive. Maybe more healing, something along those lines. Let's give it a shot. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
one more attempt let's see if she's if she survives that seven percent damage we just did is gonna probably triple or quadruple so we got the aspen across from the right target now that's a big bonus but again we're not getting actives in every round so we're not stealing attack as often and all that fun stuff and drake seems to be the one that's getting hit pretty hard this time essentially the second yeah the second drake gets a buff from uh, from that uh, mystic fairy freya that's when he dies but it does look like maybe heart watchers in the clear now maybe it's just too much to ask both of them to be surviving Man, if only we had like a destiny or not even destiny transition but a uh a tree of origin five drake that would be pretty solid wouldn't be as good for attack purposes for our lord of fear aspen if we made him a tenant um but again we're stacking up all this heart all these heart watcher marks which probably is better than having a drake survive so i don't know maybe maybe throwing some support hero in here to help keep the team going could be better Maybe running Scarlet Queen Halora's core might be better too in order to heal up. Because yeah, we just lost all the support heroes. Uh, that was like double the damage though. And essentially, whew, Aspen crushed it there. I wonder if you went down in that fight. Much better, much, much better damage. Let's try one more thing here. Well... Man, there's really not much else to try here because we've kind of just maxed this out. Yeah, the only other thing I could think is maybe running her core in hope. Or actually, no, we could run his core because his core gives damage reduction. That could be helpful. Do one more hit. One more hit, see if the team can survive. We'll use his core, which, of course, isn't giving bonus attack, but it is giving damage reduction, control immunity, all that fun stuff. We'll see if it's enough. They also need to high roll their own ingots for prosperity in hopes that they get a ton of them. But yeah, this heart watcher is probably dead round one, right? Or round two. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Which, yeah, it seems like no matter what we do, we're going to be pretty much around that. So what if we decide to then just drop all of the support heroes, like those types of heroes? And instead, we run like you and you in the mix. And we build you back for offense here. That looks good. And we get the cat. That's awesome. And then we do the same thing with Natalia here. And honestly, we can build her for attack as well. Might mean we do something a little better. And at that point, we could probably go back to her core. We'll see what happens. It might be better just running all Transcends heroes. Uh, that'd be crazy if this could somehow one-shot this. I really don't think it is. And I still don't think this is better than like a Demon Bell setup with a single damage dealer. But it's fun to try stuff like this just to see how it would work. And we got the chest. We got the artifacts. Might as well check it out. Um, survivability should be a lot better because I don't think any of these Destiny transitioned heroes have a chance of dying to the Forces, uh ultimate skill there. Or his active skill. So, the team should survive. Ray is hurt a little bit. But we do have a decent amount of healing, shielding, all that funness. I don't think any of our heroes die at this point. And that will mean more damage going out to the enemy between the Vulcan and the Natalia. So even though the Aspen and the Lord Sparkles damage will come down, the other two damage dealers will go up. It just feels so weird not having an active skill every single round in a game mode like this. Uh, let's see. What, what do you guys think the damage is going to look like? I think we're going to kill Forces here. I don't think we'll kill Vulcan on this attempt, though. Yeah, it's sizable hits by both Natalia and Vulcan. Doesn't compare to Aspen, of course, but still. Lord Sparkles has a lot of that chase ping damage. Every time he goes in, hitting for like three to four billion. And of course, we have these counterattacks for three to five billion per hit. <laughs> yeah, this damage is starting to add up when we actually get active skills off here. I 
The downside is I didn't really focus on the speed, so our damage dealers are going before our Freya, which might mean the poison drops off occasionally. I'm just intrigued to see what the late round damage might look like. <laughs> Basics feel so bad nowadays when you see how much damage active skills do. It's crazy. Okay, Vulcan hit was actually pretty solid there. Again, we're getting to the later rounds, so we're going to have more stacked up poison damage if we got lucky with where the snake buffed. Because the snake only targets four allies. We have six on the battlefield. It means the chance of Lord of Fear Aspen and Lord of Sparkles getting every single one of them isn't like 100%. It's like a, what, 66% chance or something like that. Probably even lower. Next round 13 should be a big power hit right here because... Doom Terminator Vulcan also has weakness disclosure, so this is going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, we take one target out, take two targets out with the Vulcan. And then we're down to one for two turns. I don't think I don't think this is going to be big damage because we're not going well, no, we're not going to get back to actives on our two main damage dealers, which sucks. Because Vulcan's not going to hit us. So they're just going to basics, and that's going to feel horrible. But that was a lot more damage. That for sure felt like... A, wait, was that more damage or was that less? Weren't we doing E16? I actually don't remember. No, we must not have because that that's a big hit. And this should be cleared out in one tap right here, right? Yeah, that clears it out. So uh, interesting to say the least. I don't know if it's a great strategy. I don't know if we can abuse this in other game modes, but... Six cats is on the menu, and we're going to have to see if we can make it work. Now, again, if these were the pre-nerf versions where it just happened at the beginning of every round, we would instantly get a ton of defense and all damage on these heroes. That would have been more impactful. The way it is now, I don't know if it's necessarily good, but we'll test it out and see what it's like in other game modes. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you guys next time.